covering a half an inch of frost. <laughs> mm. So weird transitioning to uh, just get up, put on a pair of shorts and flip flops and uh, going about your day every day. Come home to this. <sighs> anyway, I think I'm, I got maybe, I'm thinking I'm getting caught up on the, on the jet lag thing. I woke up at five o'clock this morning and I feel 10 times different than I did yesterday. Holy shit, it was a mess, tired yesterday. Here comes Adventure Dog. Um, I'm gonna get right into it, sharing a bunch of voices here this morning. Had a sh overwhelming amount of emails in about how to share knowledge with people, about offending people or freaking them out. Appreciate it all. We'll get to it. What are you doing, puppy? Hmm? What are you doing? We're gonna wait here today. Who knows what she's wearing? She's such a monster, aren't you? Huh? Monster doggy. Hey. Anyway, sir, so shaved my head yesterday. Got no hair left. Probably a little too early. <laughs> I probably needed that hair to help keep my head warm when I go steelhead fishing. But anyway. Another thing too that's bizarre is when you go away for a while to a country where none of the BS exists that they're pushing on us these days. It's a really weird transition, you know, to go and experience no BS for a full month and you come home to everything's just upside down. And that's a fact. It's kind of weird to experience that. More on that later. Now, listen to this. There's some important voices to be heard. We're going to get right into them. And then I'm going to go up into the mountains. Today, see if we can find some firewood and crack the ca video camera open out in the real world. And get out of this in indoor shit. Regret finally put to rest. I'm taking these right off the top this morning, so a lot of these are recent. Steve called me Pappy D. I can't disclose my name because it would jeopardize my son's career. Gotcha, man. I'm hunting lease in Northeast Texas. My son and I have been hunting there since he was eight. I've always filled our tags, and I enjoy watching my Baby boy grow into a responsible man. When he was 12, he was hunting from a tower blind on a long right away. While he was hunting, I got a text from him. He had just seen a Bigfoot. My rational father's brain immediately responded. It was probably another hunter crossing the right away in the adjoining property. Nothing else is ever said. Fast forward to last month. After following your channel for over a year, my son's text popped in my mind 
during a conversation I was having with a hunting buddy. Hey, hey, not that one. Hey. She's uh, <laughs> tasting some of the deer heads on the wall, deer antlers on the wall. We were talking about strange things and the topic of Bigfoot came up. I shared the story of my son's text with him. He then told me about when he was hunting with me one weekend about three years ago. He got into his ground blind about an hour before daybreak and was in the process of getting everything squared away. It was about 22 degrees, but cold, and no moon or stars from cloud cover. Directly behind the blind was nothing, heavy brush, and brambles. There was, these were way too heavy to try to walk through. As he sat waiting on daybreak, he heard three heavy footsteps coming through the heavy brush behind the blind. He yelled out, hey, are you effing with me? And racked around into, into the chamber of his 270 Remington rifle. Then silence, nothing else was heard. Even after the sun came up, he looked out behind the blind, nothing was there. Remember, everything was frozen solid and even just grass crunched underfoot. This is the first time he told me about his experience since it happened. He is one quarter Cherokee. He suggested I ask my son about the day I got the text. The very next day I asked my son if he remembered. At first he pretended not to remember, but after I told him my buddy's experience, he said, yeah, I remember. I asked if he thought it was a Bigfoot. He told me it was tall, all black, and crossed the 50 yard wide right of way in just a few seconds. I immediately apologized for not believing him and let him know I totally believed he saw one. He had not been stressed about it, but was glad to have me believe him. No doubt. Good for you, man. That was a, that's a good move there. Thanks, Pappy D. P.S. How to share what you know and want to share with everyone? Start it with a question that forces your audience to think about it and maybe do some research on their own. Then come back a few days later and say whatever's on your mind. Okay, man, thanks for that. I appreciate that. And I'll bet you gave your, your son might not, not admit to it as much as he wants to, but I'll guarantee you, you just gave him a shit pile of, of calm. He never forgot that moment for one second. It's tattooed into his brain and probably crisp as crisp, as crisp can be in his mind all the time. I'll bet, he, I'll bet not too many days go by without him thinking about that day. I'll bet you if you ask him that, he'll admit to that for sure. Send him, this, send him this video too. And you'll know just how many people out there that know exactly what's going on to a point. <laughs> right? Also, I'm curious to know uh, how you came about following this topic. A year ago, he said, a little over a year ago, without having an incident yourself, it'd be interesting to know how you came across this channel and, and start following all of our craziness. Thanks for sending that in, man. Appreciate it. Really appreciate that one. Really appreciate all of them, actually. All right, here is another one. Can't wait to get in the woods today. This is titled The Deeper Skeptic. Hi, Steve. Please let me begin by thanking you and your channel for what I and many believe to be truthful accounts by honest people, though herein lies my biggest question. As an avid outdoorsman, fisher, and hunter of more than 40 years, I too have felt the creepy silence of the forest. At times I've felt stalked, and at times I've actually left my hike due to uncomfortable feelings. I call that second sense and respect that gut and respect that gut feeling more often than trying to rationalize everything as science or cryptic. No different really than most other animals can feel natural disasters coming before people can. Yeah, that's pretty weird, right? Kind of reminds me on that statement too when we were in Thailand they were telling us that the elephants all knew well before the tsunami was coming too. Weird, eh? and they're all acting freaked out. I learned by my close relationship with my dogs to see their distress long before I felt the tremors of an earthquake. For a fine example. More to my point. Sasquatch phenomenon. On one hand, it seems impossible to have so many accounts that so many people could be lying, yet on the other hand, it seems impossible to have so many accounts that there must be a Sasquatch behind every tree in the forest which we know isn't true. I don't go out looking for such beings, and understandably, by so many accounts, I hope I never run into one. 
That being said, anytime I'm in the forest, I'm always loaded with my camera gear as a wildlife photographer, as well as equipped with 10 millimeter sidearm and bear spray. I also never act in stealthy, in a stealthy mode. Wait a minute. That's a helicopter humming in the background. I also never act in a stealthy mode when entering or leaving a photo shoot or hunting trip. I walk in and out very naturally as if I'm supposed to be there. As if I belong in this forest just as many other creatures do. I'm gonna wait for this thing to fly over. It's coming right over the shop. Once in my position, I also don't mind letting my presence be slightly known. Birds, squirrels, chipmunks, etc. begin to also act naturally. Yes, I've had the odd bear surprise. I think we both shat a little. And even a cougar that seemed more shocked than me to discover how close we were to each other. Unfortunately, I've never had to fire on any of them. I've never ever had to deploy bear spray. So, living in the Pacific Northwest my entire life and spending decades in the forest, I truly hope they don't really exist. Or I truly hope I remain lucky to never encounter any of them. Though it does seem there are far too many creatures for them to not be ed to not be everywhere. Please make mention. I mean, no, I mean no disrespect to anyone. I certainly do not mean any discredit to discredit so many accounts. It's just so hard to comprehend so many accounts. They would have to be everywhere, and you're only one channel of a dozen channels where these accounts are being reported. Just trying to get my head around it. Thank you. Yeah, no doubt. Well, it's good you're giving it the time, right? It's good that you're uh, listening to the people. That's the key, is listening to the people. You want to learn about anything today? You listen to the people, nobody else. Meaning, uh, no mainstream bullshit flow. Anyway, um, I don't know, man. They're not behind every tree, but they're not too far away. Don't shoot the messenger. It's not my fault. Um, it just is the way it is. Now, I don't know why some people get to experience it and some others don't. That's a very odd thing for me to be aware of and I take note of. It's, I mean, it would, have, it would take a little while to go in, in depth to investigate each person who has had an experience. What would you check out? Their energy levels, their, their blood type, their personality, I don't know, their demeanor where they've been, what, they, what their knowledge level is, their education level, I haven't a clue. All the different factors you can, you can start adding up and then take in the people they associate with or the people they were with that did not and were not aware of the beings at the exact same time and then, and then go down the list of all their characteristics maybe. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I do not know what the factor is that allows some people to have experiences and some don't. I haven't a clue because it seems to be straight across the board. Race has nothing to do with it. It's equal all the way across the board. We're all human beings. When it comes to this topic, we're all 100% equal. And everybody's having experiences. Are they everywhere? They are. <laughs> There's places where I go and I am deep in the heart of the middle of absolute ground zero. So, many, so often for so many years in British Columbia, it's ridiculous. And it's to the point now, it's like, I can be on my side, what I call my side of the valley and in that timber and I'll hunt that timber for years and not have nothing happen. But I won't go across that side. Why? I don't know. There's just a natural barrier. The, I pick up, the, the pressure picks up and my ears, the backs of my ears and the hair on my neck and everything goes like, er, like it's almost like a low volume of the feeling you get from dragging your fingernails on chalkboard. It's like, er, I'm not going in there. I'm not going in there. Don't know, I haven't a clue why. But anyway, they may not be everywhere, but they're not far off. They're not too far away at any time. <laughs> this is a difficult thing to answer, right? I would suggest, you know, you don't want to have an experience, just keep going with your gut instincts. Keep going with it. Unless, unless one of those rare, super rare incidents happen where it just gets slapped in your face and your headlights or whatever, right? Peeks out behind a tree, there's nothing you can do about it. It catches you off guard and your sixth sense does not pick up on that beforehand, which... Why? I don't know why. 
That'll be uh, ice crunching under tires sound. That's how cold it is here. Anyway, don't let it stress you out too much, man. It's just like death. Death's coming, but we don't get stressed about it every single day. There's, you don't have any control over it. So, um, if there's an experience coming your way, it's coming. There's, there's no, nothing you can do to get out of it. It's just going to be how you deal with it. At least you've got a little bit of a pre-up, a pre-somewhat chunk of knowledge in there. So hopefully, if it, if it does ever happen, you can deal with it a little better than a lot of people deal with it. The shock, right? Anyway, keep watching and keep, keep learning. All right, what do we got here? This is titled 28 Years Ago. Hello, Steve. My name is Corey Shellhas. Don't keep Shellhas. Don't worry about keeping my name secret. I don't care what people think about me. 90% of them are sheeple anyway. <laughs> I live in a little area called Svensson. It's right outside Astoria, Oregon, right on the Columbia River. Been many sightings in that area. Not mine, though. Mine took place up in Washington. It was three and a half miles outside of Coppolis Beach, heading east on Coppolis Beach Road. It was 1994 when I was eight. I was at a friend's house that day. My friend and I liked to explore the area every chance we could. It was a heavy forested landscape. Across the road from where he lived was a logging road. We'd wander up there from time to time. We were at the end of the logging road by this little pond, playing some childhood game or throwing the knives we had at a log. I remember that area had reprod around 10 to 12 feet tall. You couldn't see into it. As we were goofing off, there was this roar. It was so loud and close. We froze, looked at each other like, what the F was that? It was the second roar when we both decided to take off running as fast as our little legs could carry us. As we were running, there was something pacing us, roaring the whole quarter mile to the pavement. When we hit the pavement and got across, the roaring stopped. We kept running. We didn't stop until we were in the house. We told his mom what happened. She just brushed it off and said it was probably someone messing with us. I know what it was today. Back then, as an eight-year-old boy, I was just one to the next thing. Sorry, back then, as an eight-year-old boy, I was just one to the next thing. Really didn't remember. It happened until about a year or so ago. Thankfully, it didn't have any lasting damage effect on me. I spent most of my free time out in the forest hunting or scouting for new area and elk to hunt or riding, camping, or just hiking. The forest is my favorite place in the world to spend time. Too many idiots in the world to send too much time, spend too much time around people. I can go on and on about the blindness and the retardation of mankind today, but save that for another time. I'll email in with my stepson's encounter he had recently some other time. Right now I'm hungry. Time for some steak and eggs. Keep being you, Steve, and don't let the idiocracy we call life get you, get to you too much. One day it will change, hopefully. It's definitely all going to come to a head soon, without a doubt in my mind. You had an experience. All right, man. Well, make sure you send that in. Too bad you didn't include it in this one, because tell you what, getting the freaking email, get your, getting your email found and read is almost like a lottery these days with how many are in here. So many. What a shitty thing to do. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, these things, these beings outclass us in so many ways, but on the other hand, they're not the smartest things either, right? When you think about it, if you were to put all of their actions if you took all of the actions that these forest people do to us and then put all those actions on a human being and get them to mimic the actions, well, that human being's not going to really come across as that intelligent a person, right? Isn't it kind of weird? They outclass us in abilities, but when it comes to uh, acting and reacting rationally, they kind of fail in a way, don't they? With a lot of the shit they do to us without being provoked. You know, let's face it, if, you did, if a human being did to us what they do to us, we would look at them like a frickin' psychopath, right? 16 years old and Sasquatch is screaming in my face. Oh, no. Hi, Steve. How you doing today, and how are all the people at the round table doing? I hope everyone's doing well. My name is Jeff Pierce, and you can say my name. 
This experience was when I was 16 years old. Me and my girlfriend Christine were up at Mount Sai Trailhead. It was about midnight and Christine and I decided to go up to the trailhead parking lot and lay out a blanket and go make out and talking. It's really quiet up there in the pitch dark. Every time that Christine and I would start talking or making out, I kept hearing something creeping up, getting closer and closer. And it started to trip me out because it kept getting closer and closer. And it was effing being sneaky, like I could hear it walking on two legs. I don't know if it was a person or what. It was, did not even think of Sasquatch. I whispered to Christine, I said, we need to get in the car and leave. And I said, something's sneaking up on us every time we're talking and it's sneaking up, it's getting closer and it's really close now. So she gets up and I get up, she gets in the car through my side, through the driver's door, and I bent over to pick up the blanket that we're laying on, and I stood up, and right then, the scream was so effing loud, it was right in my face. I couldn't see it because it was too dark to see. Anyway, I jumped in the car, had my foot to the floor when I started my old 66 Chevy Caprice. At the same instant, I had in reverse, and I shot rocks all into the woods right in front of me, from being in reverse. I flip a bitch in the parking lot, still to the floor. Flip a bitch, flip a. Anyway, I never took my foot off the gas and I did a huge donut in the parking lot, shooting rocks in every direction. I was trying to get my headlights on whatever we heard, but I didn't see anything. What really sucks is that I haven't been back up to the trailhead since that day or night. And I mean, I haven't been hiking up in the woods since, since then. I've been in the woods, I've camped in the woods, but I've never been back to the trailhead. Okay, we're missing a bunch of punctuation. Okay, you guys, be patient with me. Since that day, Aunt Christine, she don't want to talk about it. And my friends don't believe me, of course. You know, you've heard the same old shit, same old story, but I know they are real. I've had many, many dealings with them. I wrote this out of order. That was my second encounter. Back up to when I was 14. I was going to my friend's house. who lived a couple miles away. I was riding my 10-speed A Schwinn, at the time, one of the fastest 10-speed you could buy in the 70s. Excuse me. I rode down Redmond Fall City Road, heading west towards Tolt Hill. My friend Bill lived at the top of this hill. I rode up the hill as far as I could. I had pushed my, back, my bike the last eighth of a mile when I heard something moving fast to my right down an old fire road, logging road. I turned to see this massive creature running full bore towards me. At that moment, it was around 50 yards and closing fast. I stood long enough to get a good look at it. It had the body of what I can describe as a huge brown bear, but with a wolf looking head. It had silver hair, long with black tips, in the hair, black eyes, big snout, like a large canine very large teeth and it was snarling and snapping his teeth as it was coming for me. I knew it was run or die. This thing wanted to eat me, I have no doubt. So it was 30 yards away at this point. I spun my 10 speed around and ran down the hill as fast as I could run, pushing that bike. I jumped on the bike and pedaled my up and ass off. I could hear its claws in the pavement behind me, but I never looked back. I had a speedometer on the bike and it went to 55 and I was beyond that. I pedaled down that hill in high gear until I couldn't pedal any, pedal any faster. It scared me. Check this out. At the bottom of Tolt Hill, I could go straight up the hill and get to his house. So that's what I did. I just did not ride up that road anymore. I have a couple more details about this creature. We grew our own beef growing up. I know what a thousand pounds standing on four legs looks like. This thing was at the minimum, 650 up to 800 pounds. Maybe it's front legs, arms, whatever. They, they looked to be almost as big as its hind thighs. As it was coming at me, it pulled with its front legs at the same time and pushed off with both back legs at the same time. I'm sure you can picture that. Well, that's all I can write about it today. It kind of freaks me out a little about my first encounter. I'm sure glad I could move fast or I would be dead. Thanks for reading this. 
I'll write in the game about several dozen encounters with Sasquatch and things I have no clue what they are. Missing time and spacecraft not from here. I hope some can benefit from this. Jeff from the western slope of the Cascade Mountains. Holy shit, Jeff, it sounds like you are one of the unfortunate who are what people refer to as tagged. That's a shit eating experience. That's, like I said before, you guys know my stance on that description of animal. It took me a while for me to wrap my noggin around it and accept it. I don't even know how many of you I had to listen to before I had to, I had to gulp that one down and realize, all right, this is real and alarming. And 30 yards, 50, 30 yards, and the speed at which they can travel, I don't know. It's very, it's hard to imagine a picture how and why these things do not grab the people that they charge and run after that fast. That thing could have had your ass easily. There's no doubt about it. Why they expend the energy to charge a human being in full view like that and not follow through, I haven't a clue. I haven't a clue. Is it because they are in a different plane than us and they can vaguely see us and it's on their side of the plane somewhat, but they can't quite cross the absolute physical touch to touch. I don't know. Obviously, it's very confusing for me because I can't really put into words clear enough right now, right? It's a weird, it's a weird factor. Don't you think? How many people write in about having something like this moving so fast and charging right at us and you tell them to look into space, it hated me, it wanted to kill me, it wanted to eat my ass, but they don't follow through and the people get away. I wonder why. Why even expend your energy to do that to a simple human being? Because we are so easy. We're nothing. We're, we are not a challenge in the natural world. We are not a challenge as a prey animal. <laughs> you know, we just aren't. Unless we're loaded to the nuts with firearms and have a few other people with the same. Then it'd be a little more challenging, but I don't get it. I really, really do not understand why that part. Why, why even expend the energy to charge a human being like that? It'd be absolutely intimidating as, as all intimidating can be and not follow through. Is it because you can't? It's got to, it's got to be, right? When you picture that kind of emotion, that kind of ferocity, that build and committed to the charge when you know, I know prey animals, ultimate prey animals, once they commit like that, they're going, they're going all the way. They're not, they're not kidding around. They are going all the way and they're going to grab your ass. Why don't they? That's a good question, right? Why don't they? Who's got the answer to that one? Anyway, make sure you email us back in with the rest of whatever else you got, man. I want to hear about it. I'm the sponge. I want to hear all everything you got. And if you get the chance to write it down, blast it all out in one email. If it gets to be too much to write down one night, we'll just put it away and finish it the next night or next week or whatever you got, all right? But make sure you put it all in one big batch. Because then if you, if you send me a chunk of it next time and I read it, and then I don't find another email for a couple months, the next additional email will be hard for us to make sense of where it came from and what it's relating to, right? Because there's so many people sharing their shit. Thanks, man. Absolutely appreciate your time. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you again, all right? And I'm sure everybody else is, too. I'm glad you survived that day. Crazy. All right, here we go. This next one is titled, Attention, Sarah and Steve. I hope this will catch your eye. Bracket, scared shitless, part two, mold dudes. Bracket, you asked me for. Excuse me. Steve, on February 6, 23, you read an encounter I sent and you asked to send you the second part. So I wrote it down and sent it to you. The title was, Friends Scared Shitless Part 2. It would be in at your new inbox. I tried sending this in a year ago and it would not send and my laptop started acting up. And now after I rewrote all and sent it in two parts, it's acting up again. Just hope you got the second part. It took me a while to write in, to write in down. I'm a very slow typist. That's okay, I'm a, I'm a challenged reader. There's a tr this is a true story. 
I've been sitting on for 30 years. My two friends had to move out of Northern California over this. One friend has passed away now and it gave the man PTSD bad. When I made him tell me what they encountered while driving too, his face went white. The hair on his arm stood up and he was, and when he was finished telling me, he pulled the truck and trailer over and puked. Holy shit, that's some serious impact. And made, me and made me drive and said if I ever asked again, he'd kick my ass, and I never did. Thanks, Sarah, for me. Thanks, Sarah, for me, my hat came. I have some photos I'd like to send you by ground mail only if I could get your address, and a gift for your man cave. John C. Winshell, Placerville, California. I hope I pronounced that correct, man. I've had more shit going on on my ranch all the time. Reno, my Rottweiler, had, a, tr had treed a juvenile eating all my cherries. It jumped over an eight-foot fence and hit the ground like 400 pounds. And when I had it in the crosshairs and a light on it, no way. Keep up the good work, Steve. P.S. I'm a 63-year-old and have hunted and fished all my life in the high country. I also had a, had a buck just like the non-typical with a forked eye guard and a big high fork beams. I'll send a pic of it. <laughs> okay, man. Now on to the next email. So I did a search. I've got your emails here. One more, one big one here. All right, here we go. Friends Scared Shitless Part Two. Steve, on February 6, 23, you read a story I sent you and asked for more. This is my, this is the truth my friends shared with me. I told them of my savvy encounters, so they knew that I was into the cryptic topic. I'd mentioned the steel doors to some of my other hunting buddies, and they said they never seen the steel doors in that country. A few weeks later, I, okay, that must be the doors with the Jeep prints going in and out or something, or Jeep tracks and footprints going in and out of that doorway. Remember that? A few weeks later, it came up to me and said they took a trip four-wheeling up by four up by four dice on the 4th of July and found the doors I was telling them about. They took the male dude's encounter more seriously. The mole dude? Sorry. Sorry, you guys. They took the mole dude's encounter more seriously and wanted to know more. I wish that I would have written the facts down so I'd be sharp in how it all went down. 30 years goes by fast, but I'll do my best. Night vision equipment was not very good at the time, but whatever my friends had was the best you could buy or steal from the army, lol. My friends loaded their own ammo and were fine long range marksmen. I was, I was always cautious of what they called their guerrilla loads. You'd better hope your receiver and shoulder can take it. They spent a lot of time up there that year and I thought they might have been growing something up there, but why would they be taking their other friends in there? This country has some monster big bucks in it, and a small amount of tags were drawled out in this zone. One friend had a one ton with a big block that was pumped to the max with a cab over camper, and they had been staying up in up there. This will come into place soon. As time went on observing, more like a reconnaissance mission, they wanted to find out all they could. After the photos got confiscated, by some three-letter whoever agency, they became more cautious. What? What made me recall all this after all these years is they had put down some of the trophy bucks from long range. One would spot the other into where he seen it drop, but all was found was blood spot, no buck, no drag marks. Something was stealing their kill. This pissed them off and whatever was doing this was gonna get a gorilla load to the head. Well, I wonder if they knew what, why it would have to be a, quote, gorilla load. <laughs> one time, they noticed, sorry, one time they knocked one of these huge bucks down right before dark. And before they could get to it, a couple of jeeps pulled up with men in camel uniforms with night vision, with night vision, swarmed the kill site, took the buck and bagged up the blood and erased their tracks behind them. And this is where it went weird, as, one, as the one going after the buck hid in the rocks watching this cleanup go on. The friend 
spotting noticed a man standing by a tree in his spotting scope. As he focused in on the man, a chill wave shook him to the core. He saw himself in street clothes standing there or someone looking just like him. When he told the other guy, he said adrenaline can play tricks on your eyes and what, you've been, and what have you been smoking? Soon that friend was to get the fright of his life that would cause him PTSD for the rest of his life. Some days before, a hunter walked by the camp. They waved at him and gave the motion with you do with the arms out like there's bucks at all. Sorry, I'm reading this rough. I don't know if it's me or the typing, but it's all good. At first, they thought that he might be someone with the government acting like a hunter with orange blaze camo on, but in a few days, that would change. The day after the cleanup of their buck, they went looking where the jeep tracks went to until they spotted the man in orange camo laying down under some brush. One garbed the other and told him to look through the spotting scope. Okay, one, you meant one grabbed the other and told him to look through the spotting scope. He told me you could see up into the man's chest cavity and it was clean of blood like something gutted him and licked it clean. Okay, you missed out the part where he was dead. They had seen enough and was getting the hell out of there. As they broke camp, they frantically threw all the gear into the camper and erased all sign of them even being there, so not to get blamed for anything, night was falling. The felling of being watched and something was surrounding them. Okay, so there's a bunch of typos. I'm sorry, you guys. The feeling of being watched and something was surrounding them just out of sight and the scream started. I never heard this part of the story until years later. On a trip to San Felipe, Mexico in 2004 with the other friend, I asked him what all had happened. He didn't want to talk about it. I kept bugging him. As I watched the goosebumps rise and his complexion turn white, he told me in a shaky voice what had happened, but to never ask him again or bring it up ever. I was watching PTSD live in my friend and felt bad for even mentioning it. He told me he got the truck started and was yelling to get in now or he was leaving him there. As they piled out of there, something had jumped on the bumper and it was so heavy the bumper was dragging on the ground as he floored it and rocks were flying. The other was loading his gun and pointing it through the sliding window. Whatever was on the bumper started ripping the camper door off and was trying to get in. The shouting started and a scream, either he meant shouting or shooting started and a scream like he can't even imagine went right through them. He said he hit a big water bar so hard the camper felt like it come off, but whatever was on the bumper got launched off and was now chasing them. Kept shooting, he said, not falling, it, it's not following us anymore. As my friend was telling me this, he said, you need to drive for a while. As we pulled over and, and we switched, he said he had to piss. But as I was adjusting the mirrors for me, I saw him puking. He got in and said, never bring that up again. I told him I was sorry. If anyone out there has had anything or saw anything like, please write into Steve. P.S. I've seen animals on the internet nowadays like that. Who knows what the government's up to? Stories of in interbred soldiers in Afghanistan makes you think outside the box. I hope this will help someone out there. JW. Ooh, that's a little, little bit of a rough read, but we got, we got the point of it. Dead guy, so the guy was laying under the bush with orange on, but he was dead. You could see up into his chest. That's alarming. Kind of odd you can go up there and check it out closer. I think I probably would have, maybe. It's sad to hear your buddy's state, mental state after having that happen. A little confusing of a read, but I'm picking up what you're putting down. What a bizarre story, man. There's a bunch of de details in there that, that could uh, have about 50 questions shotgunned at them. You know, these guys, cleaned up the deer and the blood and your buddy saw somebody looked exactly like him on the slope there's a bunch of weird odd details in there anyway 
You got more, you email me back, all right? You got more, you email me back with war, with whatever you got, share it up. All right, you got my curiosity, perked. That's, a, that's one hell of a story, man. All right, let's get another one. If anybody knows anything about that area and has anything in there sounds vaguely familiar, email me, all right? And let us know what the hell's up. This next one was titled, Them Damn Eyes. Steve, Jamie Douglas here. I'm glad someone out there is doing what you're doing to help people to share and learn what we can on these people slash beasts. Thank you. Now on to what happened. I'm sorry I haven't said anything before now. Back in early summer, my sister been having a lot of shit happen at her house in Ohio. So she asked me to come over and check things out. Me and Alex take off and go. We get there, she starts explaining everything. A few hours pass, probably around 11 o'clock at night, maybe a little later. Here come these damn lights slash orbs. Came down out of the hauler. They reminded me of an old, of the old coal lights that took the big square battery that were around when I was a kid. Anyways, I tell Alex, grab a gun, let's walk up top bank, see what this is about. There's a pond behind the house about 50 feet, and then from where we stood to the tree line, it was probably 40 to 50 foot. These light slash orbs stopped right in the tree line. I spoke up, told Alex, give me the gun. When I looked over, his ass was already back at the garage door with the gun. I turned my head back, them damn things wasn't lights or orbs, they were eyes, and they turned red. They both stood at least 12 feet, and they were huge. Yes, Bigfoot slash forest people, whatever you want to call them. We stared at each other for about three minutes. They turned around and went back up the hauler. For some reason, I was never scared, but it was like, what the F? It was like they were a damn robot. I've seen a lot, but that was a first. I'll leave you all with this. If it doesn't bother you, then leave it alone. And if you think you're in danger, then put a bullet in its head. I believe they, there are good and there are bad. There's other shit out there that's a lot worse. Steve, I hope this helps someone. We're grateful, my friend, for what you do. Keep up the good work, brother. Thank you. Only for you, Steve. All right, man. Um, you got my you got my curiosity peaked to the max with that little private message. So yeah, send that in. Don't even hesitate. Send it in. And the people you're about to talk to, if they got if they're a little hesitant, send them this channel and send them a few of the videos. Pick one, whatever, and uh, let them know that this place is has got hundreds of thousands of people here who are who are dead serious that's sharing their experiences and sponging up information from others, all right? So, if what you just shared with me is, is solid, get it to me, all right? Get every single fine, teeny tiny detail of what you just hinted at and uh, get it to me if you can, all right? And whoever may or may not want to share it, share this video with them, all right? And let them know that we are dead serious. This is a safe place. We don't need names. I don't give a shit about location, although it, it does help other people. But um, let them know that we really want to know that information, all right? Appreciate you, man. Appreciate that share. Oh, man, I'm start, starting to freeze. My fingers are going frozen. <sighs> okay, listen to this. Another one, no title. Hi, Steve. Been watching, listening for several months now. Not in the club yet, but I like to keep it that way. And yes, I hunt and fish as much as possible. However, nothing like what you do. I live in Colorado and take advantage of what it offers. I've owned 10 acres on the backside of Pikes Peak with great access for deer, elk, bear, and mountain lions. My land was an old silver mine that was filled in years before I bought it and surrounded 360 degrees in Pike National Forest. My three sons and I hunted the area yearly and had ATV access to the South Platte River to fish. My question to you and your followers be included is this. <clears throat> Number one, I hear the, I hear the trending believe, belief is that Bigfoot are people-ish. Number one, why do they eat raw, fresh kill? 
Number two, fire has been available since the flood earlier, so what's up with that if they are so advanced? Number three, why so primitive if so advanced? Caves only for shelter? Number four, anybody ask where they go or come from? Or better, what's on the other side of the portal? Where is it? What's it look like? I like what you're doing. As I know many others do, please keep it up. So much more going on than just Bigfoot. P.S. Let us know what you hear about that bugger shot down over the Yukon, if you can. Much obliged, Mike. <clears throat> okay, man, if, it's, if, it's, uh, if you're pertaining to what mainstream media is feeding to the people about shit getting shot out of the sky, I don't have two seconds for that story theme. I don't, I won't, I'm not going to end a story on that one. Why do they eat raw, raw protein? I guess because they can, right? I mean, the, the majority of animals out there do the exact same thing. We're the only ones that cook. So it's not that uncommon, right? Possibly we should be able to eat raw as well, I would imagine. We'd probably, our stomachs probably grow up a tolerance to the bugs you might get from doing that over a course of amount of time, and that would be completely natural to do, right? I don't know, who knows? Fire? Why do they need fire? Why don't they need fire? There's a whole bunch of questions in there that we all want the answers to, to as well. But when you start throwing in the other factors combined, it kind of puts all those questions over there in a way. Not for all of us, but for me, it'd be like, okay. my brain more goes, fire, what they eat? Who gives a shit? I want to know how the hell they disappear. What makes their eyes glow, right? How can they frickin' disappear? You know, you look at what our... Our favorite scientist, Sherrod Edgar, about that thing jumping up and down and starting to go translucent from the bottom up. What the F is up with that? Right? Shit like that is what makes me go, what? More so than, you know, how can they eat a, how can they eat a raw fish? Well, I don't know. How the hell can they disappear? How can they make their eyes glow? How can they be, how can a researcher in Alaska hear the sounds or mimic the sounds and then frickin' 30, 40 miles away later that night show up at, at, in his driveway and have the exact sounds come out of the forest behind his house. And that might not be completely, perfectly detailed, but basically roughly what has happened to many people. So many questions. We keep digging, we'll get the answers. So many questions. I'm glad the hunters, the lifelong hunters and fishermen are following and, and reaching out more and more and more, right? Because typically, previous to this, um, other hunters, anglers, outdoorsmen would just laugh and scoff at this topic and not give it two seconds. So a lot of people I found that have not had experience but they hunt and fish all their life, they're starting to come around, right? That's a freaking good thing. Very good thing. All right, I'm gonna go one more. <clears throat> then I'm gonna get my chainsaw and my shit together, get ready to go up into the hills and I'm gonna take you guys with me. This is titled, Was It Wolves? Question mark. Hi Steve, this took place in North Central Idaho back in 0304. I was out horn hunting with my hybrid wolf dog. She was in heat at the time. I had misjudged the time and I knew I would not make it back out before dark. It was deep dusk and I came around a corner on an old skid road. As we were walking down the road, I heard rocks rolling down the hill behind us. There was a canyon and a culvert under the road. I've been hearing wolves across the canyon for some time in the past few weeks and figured it was wolves following due to my dog being in heat. I could hear them on the cut bank to the left of me and above and down the hill to the right of me. And just a side note, there are a lot of cougar in the area as well, but I don't think that was what was going on. All I had was a mag light, a mag light with two AA batteries, which did not throw a lot of light. I shined the light up the hill and saw nothing, no eye shine or anything, but could hear whatever it was fairly close. My dog would not go out in front as usual and stayed right at my feet. I was not scared, just a little concerned and had no bad feelings. All I knew was we were being trapped. I always had my 357 pistol on me, and after a bit of being paralleled, both uphill and down, I decided to fire off a couple of rounds. That seemed, didn't seem to do anything and I still heard the tracking of us. I got a handheld radio on me and called my parents, which li lived about a half a mile away from where I was at the time. My dad said he could wait at the bottom of the hill I was on and pick me up. Once I called over the radio and started down the hill, off the skid road, everything seemed better. 
You said you know fer wolves fairly well, so would they have tried to attack or just let my dog go unmolested? I went back up the next day to where I dropped off the skid road down through the forest and there were a lot of wolf tracks in the area. So my question is, do wolves behave in that kind of way or would they have tried harder to get my dog? Or could it have been something else? Thanks for all you do. Just for you. Okay, got you, man. Got your private message too. And no, I haven't heard of the guy. And, uh, but getting back to the wolves, I do know that wolves are hunted and trapped where you are a lot. And where wolves are hunted and trapped by humans, they don't follow humans around and they make tracks to get away from us. Bam, right? Um, as far as the wolves, if you had a dog in heat with you, the wolves, I mean, there has been the very odd, weird case of wolves coming and grabbing canines right in front of the, right in front of people. But that's more where they aren't hunted or trapped, right? Um, but I do know that wolves will annihilate your dogs fairly close to you, like as in as long as there's cover. If your dog gets off in the in the bush right there, the wolves just going to grab it and run away with it. Even if it's a German Shepherd, they're just going to grab it and run away with it. That's how powerful and big they are, or they're going to shred the shit out of it right there, rip its guts out, and be done with it. They do not tolerate other canines at all, and especially other wolf packs too. The number one killer of wolves is wolves. They kill the shit out of each other. Rival packs. And as far as hearing them that clear all around you, mm -mm, you don't hear them. I've had wolves... You know, I had one time I was trapping wolves and I had a deer leg and I was hanging up in the middle of this tight big ball of willow. And I was hanging it up. There was a huge, serious wolf explosion problem going on. And it was at this ranch. And uh, I was hanging this deer leg up and all of a sudden I could just feel it like, I'm looking around, looking around, looking around. This is like one in the afternoon, broad daylight. And uh, I looked down like this to look in the underbrush or it's downwind of me and there's three sets of black legs right there. <laughs> Those wolves had, but nobody had been trapping the wolves there ever before or hunting them. And uh, they were exploding and they were eating everything and they're hungry. And that's when they do stupid shit. And these wolves are right there, probably, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40 feet from me, downwind. They knew I was a human being in there, but they could smell that humming roadkill too. I got them eventually too, but that's another story. But anyway, uh, I mentioned that to let you know I had three wolves walk right in on me and I didn't hear a thing, nothing. You're not gonna hear them. You don't hear bears, you don't hear wolves. You don't, the only time you really hear game animals is when they're bolting away from you running like you wouldn't believe. Until you get to the larger size, like bull elk walking. A herd of elk walking in the timber makes shit piles of noise. A moose can be very deadly quiet, believe it or not walking silently, but elk seem to be really, really loud. Fur-covered predators are deadly silent. So, I guess what I'm saying is the, the probability of you, of it being something else and a little more alarming is right up there, as far as I'm concerned. And would they have come and killed your dog right at your feet? No, well, actually, you know what? Back in Pemberton, I had an owl ridge where our friend from Mount Curry was mentioning earlier. I had a woman phone me when wolves were going ape shit there too, and these a pack of wolves chased her dog uh, down the side of the street in front of their house, underneath the fence, and the dog stopped beside her at the front door of the house, and those three or four wolves were standing right next to her car, staring them down. <laughs> they wanted that dog bad. So there's a rare a rare incident of where I know for a fact the dogs came, chased the, the wolves chased the dog right to the owner and then stopped. It's weird how they stop though, right? Why do they stop? It's just a woman standing there. She's not going to be able to do shit to them. They could have just ran up there, pushed her aside, grabbed the dog and ran away with it. But anyway, no, I don't think it was wolves you hurt. How's that for a <laughs> quick answer tacked onto my long answer? But anyways, I'm freezing. I got to get going. And uh, I'm going to share a lot more, a lot more shortly. And I'm going to get you guys and, and my ass out in the, out in the middle of nowhere again. Get out of this indoor film and shit. Oh, another quick question. Um, 
Oh, and I think Metron is going to mention one. The man mentioned earlier about how common are these? Are they behind every tree? We have somebody, and I, oh, I have not got back to him, and I should have. Uh, we have somebody making a map, going through all of your experiences shared here and making a map. And he's going to make it available to everybody. And I forgot I have to email him a whole bunch of locations that I can rattle off real quick to add to the add to the collection. I will. I know you're probably following. I will. But uh, that's going to be interesting to see, excuse me, those dots. Excuse me, and then I just lost my train of thought. But anyway, I'm going to get going. I'm babbling. i got to get going, and um, I'm going to be sharing a whole pile more. And a quick question I wanted to ask was, who would you like to hear me speak to and have a conversation with that you could all take part in or, or sit and listen to? Send me in or even the comment section below. Tell me who you believe would be a real good informative conversation to have one-on-one, -on -one, me and them, for you to listen to. All right, let's get that list going. I'll be back shortly.